If you recall from previous videos, CPM was typically configured to match the amount of RAM present in the system it was running on. The end user could actually do that configuration using a couple of utilities that came with CPM called Move CPM and Sysgen. And we're going to demonstrate that today on an Altera running CPM. Alright, so let's go ahead and get ourselves fired up. Do the hard reset, set the bootloader ROM address, which is 177400. Examine that. It sets our PC to that address and hit run. And that boots CPM for us. Alright, let's take a look over here. And let me see if I can focus. All right, now if you notice on the cold start prompt we have here from CPM, the welcome message, it's a 20K CPM. This is a really small um, load. And in fact, this is the smallest amount of RAM CPM was designed to run in. Now, when you've got a distribution disk from CPM or from digital research, it typically was a 20K build. The reason is because a 20K could run on any system that had 20K or more of RAM. So it was a good safe starting point in order to build systems for 65K or 64K or 48K or 56K of RAM. All right, and if you recall, the reason we have to uh, change CPM size is because we want to maximize use of the amount of RAM in the system. Programs start down at address 100 hex and go upward towards the top of memory. However, CPM needs to remain in the system and it is put up at the very top of memory to give programs the largest amount of contiguous space possible. All right, so in a 20K CPM, at the 20K boundary is where CPM is located and it moves heads downward about 7K for the whole thing. Um, parts of that can be overlaid. All right, so in order to create a bigger system, um, we would use a command called move CPM. All right, move CPM with no arguments automatically finds the amount of RAM in the system and creates a CPM for that amount of RAM. So you see here it found 63K of free memory in our system, which is about right because we have some ROM up at the top and CPM works in 1K boundaries. So it's either going to be no ROM at all for 64K or the smallest increment down would be 63K for CPM. What Move CPM has done is relocated all of CPM's code so that it will run butted up against the 63K RAM limit now. Now 8080 code was not position independent, meaning you couldn't just move it around. It actually had to be relocated. So Move CPM has a bit of a job. Um, and has some additional things in it so it knows every address in the CPM program that has to be changed in order to run up here at this new location in higher memory. All right, so Move CPM has created a new copy of CPM and right now it's just sitting in memory. Now it's not sitting up in executable memory, it's down pretty low in memory. It starts at 900 hex. Uh, 900 hex is the bootloader followed by CPM including um, the command processor, the VDOS, and the BIOS, all sitting down in memory around 900. It's not going to do us any good until we put it out on the disk, and that's what sysgen was for. The sysgen command could be used several ways, um, but the way we're going to demonstrate here today is just to take that image that's in RAM from move, C move CPM and to write it to a disk. So it's asking for the source drive name or return to skip. You could actually just stick in a disk and copy an existing CPM to another disk if you wanted. Or in this case, we want to use the memory image we just created of a new 63K version of CPM. That's what the return to skip is for. If you don't specify a drive name, it uses the image that's in memory from a move CPM. All right, now it's asking us where to put it. Now normally you'd put this on drive B, or if you only had one drive, you would remove the distribution disk that you got, stick in another CPM disk that you wanted to create and write it there. Now I'm going to violate these rules. I'm just going to overwrite the disk I've already got in drive A just for this demonstration. So I'm going to type in A. You don't even see it show up. You don't have to hit return. Other versions, later versions of move CPM would, would uh, echo the A and you had to hit return. But anyway, I've specified an A so it's going to, re it's going to write this to our boot drive that we've already got in there. It's telling us, go ahead and put the disk on drive A. That way, in a single system, you had a chance to swap out and put a different disk if you want. All right, function complete. 
and it's asking if you want to do it again, basically. Or it says just hit return to reboot. Now, if you have, whoa, sorry about that. If you have ever rewritten the drive that is in, uh, that is your boot drive, what would happen right now is it would uh, reboot and have a different CPM in memory than is on disk, and it causes problems. So anytime you do a sysgen out to a disk that is in drive A, that is your boot disk, rather than hit return here, you should go ahead and reset the computer and uh, reboot. So that's what we're going to do here. I'll do a reset and reboot from scratch. All right, so now you see we boot up and we are at 63K CPM, just like we wanted. Um, there's a program called Survey, um, which will go through and show us how RAM is used. I should have done this back when we were 20K. But you can see T stands for transient program. This is where your executable program can sit. It goes all the way up here into high memory. and We can see that CPM is all the way up there near the 64K boundary. So it looks like this worked. Um, so move CPM with no arguments at all, makes as big as possible that will fit in the RAM that it finds in your system. Now let's say you wanted to create one of a specific size. So for example, let's say you were going to install um, Microsoft ROM Basic and it used 16K, and you also still wanted to be able to boot CPM, but you would never have all 63K of RAM anymore, you're only going to have 48K. So you could actually do a move CPM and say make it 48K. So with a parameter, you can specify how big you want it to be. It doesn't have to fill all the RAM. So you can see here it says constructing 48K CPM version. So now we're ready for sysgen. And again, I'm just going to write it to the drive that's in there for the sake of making our demonstrations quick and easy. Source drive name, I'm not taking it from a drive. I'm hitting return to use the image that moves CPM created in memory. This time what it created was a 48K version. Destination drive name is A. Again, you don't see it, but I typed in A. It says put the disk into A. It's there, and I'll hit return. All right, and again, rather than hitting return here because we have a different size on disk than we have in memory, we're going to go ahead and do a reset and then examine the bootloader and hit run to reboot. And as you can see, we're running a 48K version of CPM now. And on a survey, you would see that transient program memory goes up until CPM is now topped up around the 48K. It doesn't know what the rest of that RAM is. It didn't expect you to have any, but we obviously do. So it just assumes you have a giant BIOS. And here's our ROM way up at the top it detects. All right, so that's how you move. CP that's how you use move CPM. Now you probably noticed when we did move CPM that it gave you another option. This is going to give uh, full 63K. It's going to find the maximum size. It says ready for sysgen or save 38cpm63.com. What that allows you to do is save the image in memory to a file on your disk. The 38 is how many 256 byte pages to save. So I can say save 38cpm63.com. All right, so out on disk now is a file that is an image of a 63K version of CPM. If you recall, we're running a 48K right now. So as soon as I run any other program, let's, uh, let's find this out there. See, there it is right there. Let's go ahead and run a program. Uh, let's see, let's dump crc.com. We'll just, something to do here. What this is doing is I'm just making sure I clobbered the CPM that we had in memory. This program is loaded into memory and has clobbered that CPM we created. All right, so you can also do a sysgen using this image that you saved to disk instead of memory. To do that, you've got to bring it into memory. The dynamic debugger can do that. It can bring anything into memory. So we'll do ddtcpm63.com. What DDT does for us is load that into memory, just like we had done a move CPM, but now it's just magically in there from a file. All right, the only way to exit Dynamic Debugger is to tell it to go to address zero, which is basically the same thing as doing a control C or reset. All right, so now this 63K version of CPM is sitting in memory just where it wants it for a sysgen. So now I can do a sysgen and no source drive. We're going to get it out of memory because I just loaded it into memory. Destination drive is A, put it in A. 
All right, it's complete. Now let's reboot. And there you see we got a 63K version. The one we saved out to disk, we ended up creating it by loading it from a file. All right, well that does it for this video. In the next video, we're gonna run a few CPM applications. We're gonna run Microsoft Basic, some famous games like Zork the Adventure, text adventure game. Uh, we'll take a look at uh, SuperCalc, uh, one of the first spreadsheets that was out there, part of the business computing revolution in CPM as well. All right, the computer used in our demonstrations today is actually an Altair 8800 clone computer. This computer accurately duplicates the look and feel, features, and the limitations of a real Altair, but it does it with modern hardware on the inside so that you don't have to worry about damaging a vintage or museum quality computer. It's just a great way to experience this exciting period of history hands-on without having to worry about uh, damaging a computer. And this one is just going to work because it is modern and uh, uses reliable hardware that isn't 40 years old. Anyway, be sure to visit AltairClone.com to learn more about this great computer.